Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes Reacts. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Daz. And collectively we are two of the Office Blokes. Mike didn't take her advice and he used an off-brand razor to do a little bit of manscaping. And uh, he's injured. <laughs> so he's stuck at home. <laughs> <laughs> got some plasters and some stitches yeah. and like it's, it's a mess down there trust me <laughs> did you kiss it better <laughs> I did not I did not you should have used discount code office blokes at manscaped.com anyway uh, we are the office blokes two of the YouTube channels Patreon page social media merch all that good stuff click the link below and it will absolutely take you where you need to go unless it takes you where Mike went and... <laughs> don't want to go there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, SEAL team rescues Jessica Buchanan I'm not sure about this one. Someone suggested it to me. Right. Um, so it's uh, just a suggestion. Can't yeah. remember who. <laughs> I never remember who. I just <laughs> no, don't take screenshots I like, of it. Like that. That, that looks pretty good. Yeah. 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 Well, we like the uh, mm. the sort of military stuff, and yeah. especially people like the Navy SEALs. And uh, I think I know this story. Um, or I know a little bit about it. Was she in the Middle East? She was in Africa. Right. And um, I think Somalia. And I think she was a, a, a like an aid worker. You know, like um, yeah. looking after children and stuff like that. Yeah. I think. I might be wrong. They always go after low-hanging fruit, these Terries, don't they? It's easy for a minute. They really do. It's the people who aren't going to put up a fight that are general ransom, that like to look after people. It's what they do. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get into it. So SEAL Team rescues Jessica Buchanan. Let's do this. Let's do the screen record first. That'd help. Let's do this. We begin with the rescue of Jessica Buchanan. It is the story of a secret mission by SEAL Team 6 that few people had heard about until we first reported the story last year. On a January night in 2012, members of SEAL Team 6 jumped from a plane into the skies of Somalia. Yeah, Jessica Buchanan was being held hostage and the SEALs were descending just in time. Buchanan was a humanitarian aid worker who had come to help children in one of the most dangerous places on earth. Hers was an ordeal that ended in a flash of violence, but had begun 93 days earlier when her car was stopped by bandits in a place she calls hell. Before it starts, I got in a taxi the other day, um, and the driver said to me, where do you think I'm from? And I went, Somalia. He went, yeah. <laughs> How do you know? I said, because you look Somalian. He said, what do you mean? I said, you all look, I said, Somalians all look very similar. Right. And we got into a bit of chat, but different, you know, back and forth chat about different things. And I said, are you from um, uh, the capital, uh, Mogadishu? He went, no. I have another guess. I went, I don't know anywhere else, mate. Just tell me where you're from. <laughs> yeah. So he says, he said, Mogadishu is a bit of a dangerous place. He went, no, oh, it's not too bad. There's, Mog like, what? there's Mogadishu and then there's loads of boats full of pirates. That's all I know about <laughs> Somalia. That is it. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's an interesting fella. Yeah. But well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tough place to go. Well, there's no government, is there? No. No, it's just... No, 20 it's years just, been no just, government. Yeah, just anarchy, no. isn't it? But uh, this guy that's doing the narrating, mm. his arms are too long for his body. I don't know if you noticed. I can't remember his name. It's it looks well wrong. Yeah. Off proportion. We stopped very abruptly, like so abruptly that I felt like everybody just fall forward and then I start hearing all of this pounding on the windows and the windshield and all this shouting in Somali and there's a man standing there screaming and he has an AK-47 and he's shouting and he's pointing it at us and then he climbs into the car next to me and he points an AK in my face and they're hyped up like they're on speed and all of a sudden we just take off the driver just takes off and we just start slamming all over the place down these camel tracks. What did you think they were going to do? I figured they were going to rape me and then kill me. Jessica Buchanan was facing the end at the end of the earth. Somalia, on the farthest tip of Africa, is war-torn and lawless. Militias battle over an unforgiving land, as we saw while covering a famine there in 2011. It was the same year that Buchanan was with a Danish charity teaching children how to avoid landmines. On October 25th, her car was hijacked. Okay, this is it. Like, I'm bracing myself to be shot in the back of the head. And I think that there's mercy in the fact that maybe they're not going to rape me first, but that it's just going to be quick. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, 
And then all of a sudden somebody shouts from behind us, sleep. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I didn't hear that correctly, did I? He just said sleep. She collapsed, slept through the night, and, then he and the next morning was met over. by the man who led the bandits. And we ask him, are you going to kill us? Is that why we're here? And he says, no, 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 no. Money. We just want money. How much were they asking for? They started out at $45 million. They thought you were pretty valuable. I guess so. The bandits used her cell phone to call her husband, Eric Landemann. The two had married on an African beach two years before. But his number and the numbers of Buchanan's family had all been disconnected. It was part of the charity's emergency plan. The one number that worked was her Nairobi office with a hostage negotiator standing by. I like that, had no idea they did that. Yeah. That is crazy. One of the companies used to work for, we had a we had a plan to evacuate. We had evacuation plans for the right. release uh, in case anything got a bit, you know, hairy. Yeah. And uh, when I was when I used to read through the plan, I'm thinking, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And then, you know, things like this do happen. Well, you would have got shot in the first two minutes. <laughs> You'd want to worry about it. I got the camera out, <laughs> wouldn't I? <laughs> Start going live. <laughs> This is crazy though, Isn't and like it? she's there to teach kids how not to step on landmines, and that's the person you're gonna do it to. I know, I know, but they don't care. No, either. they don't. That's it's like the, in that much poverty, I guess yep. that she's just a meal ticket. To Correct, them. forty-five million quid. But I mean, come on, that's that's like Doctor Evil saying he wants one hundred trillion dollars or whatever he wants. Never gonna get that, even if it was a, a royal. 45 what, what, million quid all all the lines are disconnected the only the only one that's working is the nairobi office it's clever that mm. it really is and so began months of talks where did they keep you day in day out under trees and outside you were outdoors for 93 days mm -hmm. yeah and in and in the night they forced us to sleep out in the open you and Paul came up with nicknames for a lot of the people who were keeping you. That's one of the ways you kept yourself occupied. We did. The 10-year-old boy? Crack baby, because he was cracked out all the time. He was chewing cot, and he had two black holes for eyes. There was nothing inside. This is one of the camps where she was held. The bandits hit her, pointed their guns at her, and put a knife to her throat. But it was exposure that took a toll. She lost 25 pounds. After three weeks, the bandits made a video to prove that she was alive. Have you seen the video? I have. Paul and myself, Jessica, we are safe and we are alive. She looks dreadful, I can she? tell I'm starting to lose hope at that point. But hope would have to last for two more months. As the many weeks went by, did you think the American government's watching me, they know where I am, and somebody's gonna get me out of here. No. Why? Because I'm just an aid worker. You didn't imagine that the President of the United States knew your name? Never. Never in a million years. After three months in the desert, Buchanan had a serious urinary tract infection, and in a final call to the hostage negotiator, she said this. I'd become so ill that I couldn't stand up, I couldn't walk, so I was in so much pain. And I said, I think I have a kidney infection. And I started to cry and I said, I think I'm afraid I'm going to die out here. When that call was received here in Nairobi, it set off a chain of events that led all the way to the Oval Office. The FBI and the military consulted doctors who said that if Jessica had a kidney infection, she might have just two weeks to live. That was transmitted to the president, who was also informed that in just a few days, there would be a new moon, perfect darkness for a SEAL team rescue. I wonder if they were planning the rescue before she said that, because that's the, the way that's been made out is that, oh shit, she might die, so let's go and get well, her. I think, I think what is happening there, they're in negotiations. So they've got the hostage negotiator hmm. who's talking to the the um the kidnappers yeah and i think it's ongoing and it's it's not something you deal with over in a few days it's yeah. over a period of years sometimes 
So I think what's happened then is it's escalated by saying if we don't act now, she's going to die. Right. So then it sort of like escalates right to the top then and sort of like speeds things on a little bit. If I ever get kidnapped. <laughs> don't call me. <laughs> oh, no, I'll be like, keep him the prick. <laughs> <laughs> you give me 45 million. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd be, and it's the same with, you know, because the police don't come out a lot of the time. If your house is getting robbed or if there's no. violence or whatever, I've got a gun. Yeah, they'll soon be there. I'm sure I saw a gun. Mm. I've got a gun. <laughs> they'll be there pretty quick, quick, as you mentioned. Say, that, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, I mean, what what terrifying circumstance you've got to be in there. Yeah, but I months. think as soon as, as soon as he's kidnapping involved and his ransom money being sort of like banded around, especially these aid uh, uh, companies, yeah, they, uh, it's taken real seriously. Oh, big it's time. It's a serious threat, that. Yeah. Well, it's mm. got to be because if one person gets paid and word gets out, that'll spread exponentially. Yeah, it's a national. It? It's a national of your country. So yeah. you've got to look after them. Oh, hell that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's what it, that, you know. That's your responsibility as a, as a, as a government. Mm. And that's what the Navy SEALs are there for. Mm. Absolutely badass, yeah. aren't they? Jessica Buchanan had chosen a star in the Somali sky to represent her mother, who had passed away a year before. She spoke to it every night, and with no moon, it was especially bright on January 25th. What did you say that night? Please tell God that I need some help. We need to get out of here. You couldn't have known that that prayer would be answered that night. I had no idea. She was on a mat trying to sleep when she heard a faint scratching noise. One of the bandits she nicknamed Helper heard it too. And I see this look of just sheer terror on Helper's face. And then all of a sudden it's just this eruption of gunfire. And I think okay well this is it this really is truly the end and i cover up with my blanket again and i just start saying oh god oh god oh god and i just remember thinking or maybe i'm saying out loud like i cannot survive this she thought she was being taken by a rival group maybe al-shabaab islamic extremists who would surely kill her and then all of a sudden i feel all these hands on me roughly grabbing at me and I try to protect myself and I pull the blanket closer on top of me and then I hear my name but it's not a Somali accent it's an American accent and I can't compute like I can't understand that somebody with an American accent knows my name and they say Jessica we're with the American military we're here to take you home and you're safe that's crazy yeah, yeah. and they pull the blanket down from my face and all I see is black black masks black sky and all I can say over and over is you're American you're American. I don't, I, I don't understand you're Americans. Thinking, how did you get here? And I, I'm still alive. And they ask me where my shoes are, and I don't know. And one of them picks me up and starts running. He runs for several minutes and, and puts me down on the ground. And then they identify themselves. And that they knew I was very sick and they have medicine and they have water they have food and they've come to to take me home at one point I think they thought they heard something I don't know this group of men who's risked their life for me already asks me to lie down on the ground because they're concerned that there might be somewhere, someone out there and then they make a circle around me and then they lie down on top of me to protect me. And we lay like that until the helicopters come in. When all of those seals laid down on top of you, you were the most important thing in the world to them. Yeah, it's really hard to comprehend. They were going to take a bullet for you. Mm -hmm. And they're so kind, and they're so gentle, and they are trying to assist me 
to get to the helicopter, but I think I've been out here for months. I can run to this helicopter myself, and so I just break away, and I just take off running through the scrub, through the bush, and I throw myself onto that helicopter and push myself up against the wall. And I don't start breathing until we actually lift up off the ground. And they hand me an American flag that's folded. What did you think of that? I just started to cry. At that point in time, I have never in my life been so proud and so very happy to be an American. The SEALs. Why is the guy she was kidnapped with? She said there was two, didn't she? At the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> he was probably like French, probably left him. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't coming, mate. <laughs> A little bit, and then I think we'd like comment on it in about 10 yeah. seconds. Left on other helicopters. She didn't see their faces, didn't hear their names. They appeared, and they were gone. The only thing left in the camp were nine dead bandits. Fuck it. It's just, it's absolutely crackers, isn't it? It's going on now. We've got the similar sort of situation, not similar situation, we've got hostage situations and people being killed in Afghanistan, oh. you know, and um, you know, different nationalities, and each country looks after their own. You know, obviously, they've got to. That's their uh, responsibility. Well, yeah, I get that. But that, that, I mean, to me, that just shows how badass the Navy SEALs are. And, it, you know, when people want to talk about justifying military spending and stuff like that, if that was your family member, you'd yeah. be like, that's worth yeah. every yeah. penny mm. to get them back. I'm, I'm big on that. I mean, what America spends on military spending anyway is just like, it's, it, it keeps everybody safe. That's the reason why we're in a, a world that's semi-safe, let's say. Mm. I know people are going to say it's not semi-safe, it's not, but it is. We, it could at, be a lot, lot worse. We are at one of the most peaceful times in history mm. at the yeah. moment, believe it or not, with mm -hmm. all the conflicts that are yeah. going on. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, but... I, uh, on the way into work, I was listening to Jocko Willink's podcast, mm. and he's an ex-Navy SEAL. He's got an amazing podcast, about 500 episodes in, where it could be five hours of someone telling a story mm. that's been in battle, or people like her yeah. go on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he gives the SEAL's perspective, mm. and um, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, it's so inspirational to listen to. I'd love him to interview her. Yeah. It'd end up being a four hour long podcast about everything. So interesting as well. Yeah. I, so I love stories and people's got a story to tell like that. I just don't know. You could sit and listen to them yeah. for days and days and days. And that's a good thing about podcasts, I guess. Yeah. I can see why people like that write books though, because I'd get to a point where I'd be that sick of reliving it, discussing it mm. with people, write it down, draw a line under it. There's my story. And just because she was visibly upset there. People still want to listen to it though. Of course they would. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, you know, go and do a couple of podcasts. And I mean, I think when you take on these roles in the uh, in, in these certain countries like that, you know what you're getting into. You know I, the risks that go with it. I think a lot of people go into it quite naive. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm going to help, I'll be all right. Yeah, you're explained, a lot of it's explained to you by the embassies. As soon as you go into a, as soon as you go into a country where it's, it's a little bit volatile, the yeah. embassy, you get all the notifications from the embassy as soon as you arrive. Right, and the to you're told how to behave, sort of thing, and what to do and where not to go, and there's a lot of stuff that goes down that you probably won't see on a. I don't know when you fly into Spain or somewhere. If you fly into, yeah, yeah. You know, if you fly into the the, the 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 Congo, for example, yeah, you, you're advised pretty quick by <laughs> yeah. the embassy on what yeah. to do and on how to behave. Yeah, I can imagine. So, it's yeah. uh, it's it's crackers though, and I I just think, like she said, they've all just gone. They don't know mm. her. No. I know it's the jobs, the job. yeah. but you know they've gone in all lay on top mm. of her, ready yeah. to take a hail of gunfire to yeah. save her, and that that's just nuts. But a lot of these people who are in the seals and things like that, and similar sort of units around the world uh, and different divisions. They live for that. Oh, fuck they yeah. want that. Minute. They <laughs> yeah. want that. They yeah. want that phone call. They're pacing, yeah. waiting for that phone call. But that, that's one thing I've heard Jocko say on his podcast is that essentially the life of a seal is just training, mm. prepping, yeah. training, prepping. Mm. You get the call, you train. Maybe the mission's called off train for the next one mm. you just keep going yeah. and you're just waiting for that moment yeah yeah you know just the absolute legend though yeah and what they did there was the right thing and it was uh, it was great to see in the end i yeah. like how they ended it on there saying there was nine dead bodies as mm. well yeah because i was in my mind i'm going i hope you fucking killed them all yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah empty their nice. bank accounts <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah get the get the cash cards <laughs> while they're dead on the floor <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that too. Don't forget like and subscribe, hit the bell. Catch you on the next one. Cheers, Cheers. guys.